Sup, Chooms, how y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. So if you guys remember, a couple of videos ago, I talked about whether isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, can cause hair loss, and there was a lot of general comments about treatment of acne, which got me interested in the subject. One of the questions that was brought up was whether dairy products like milk and cheese can have an effect on acne. So... I decided to look into this question, but remember, the name of this channel is Hair Cafe, not Zit Cafe, so I don't want my channel to lose its focus. So rather than make a video purely about acne, I decided to expand it further and ask the question not only about acne, but also about what effect dairy intake has on hair loss, specifically androgenic alopecia. Every generation alive today has been exposed to propaganda from the dairy industry. If you're a boomer, you may remember milk being touted as an anti-aging miracle food like the TV commercials of the 1950s claimed. For younger generations, we were exposed to bullshit slogans like got milk or the ones I remember from when I was a kid in the 1980s that said milk, it does a body good. And the commercials made it out that if you didn't drink milk, you'd grow up to be a massive pussy and the girls would all laugh at you. I think the slogan the dairy industry uses today is milk life, although we don't see nearly as much milk propaganda these days because the dairy industry is dying as it is facing heavy competition from plant milk alternatives and as such, the government likes to heavily subsidize the dairy industry due to pressure from lobbyists who insist on convincing the entire world that breastfeeding from another animal species is essential for good health even though the majority of humans cannot even properly digest milk due to the lactose intolerance that about 65% of the population of the world has. Of course, as a vegan, I welcome the dairy industry's impending doom as the mass production of milk for human consumption requires the physical abuse and sexual exploitation of cows since after all, a cow cannot produce milk unless it is pregnant and since the milk the cow produces for its offspring will instead be sold for human consumption, that means the baby cows will be killed as babies to support the veal industry. Of course, the ethics or lack of ethics of the dairy industry is another subject here and my my job is to follow the science wherever it may lead, so I'll put my personal biases against the dairy industry aside in order to make my take on this topic as objective as it could possibly be. So let's go ahead and take my patented balls deep dive into dairy and see what, if any, effect consuming dairy products has on your skin and on your hair. Okay. Let's start with acne because there's a lot more data to go over here. Perhaps unsurprisingly, since they are both androgenic traits, acne has a link to androgenic alopecia since they are both made worse by the trash hormone DHT. But acne actually isn't as straightforward as androgenic alopecia. DHT is really the root trigger of androgenic alopecia, and if you can get your scalp DHT under control with a 5-AR blocker like finasteride or dutasteride, you will get your hair loss under control. It's that simple. DHT is 100% the problem. If someone is still losing hair on a 5-AR inhibitor, which is rare, then they can simply just use a stronger 5-AR inhibitor and the problem will be solved. We know this because in populations of people who have a genetic deficiency of the 5-AR enzyme, there is no hair loss whatsoever and all of them have juvenile hairlines even into adulthood. With acne, however, it's not that simple. DHT does, of course, play a role, but it is only one factor, and there are other factors, namely other androgens besides DHT, like dehydroepiandosterone, and also other hormones play a role as well, including progesterone and even estrogen. There are also non-steroidal hormones that can influence acne as well, such as human growth hormone and a substance that is similar to human growth hormone called insulin-like growth factor 1, also known as IGF-1. During adolescence, these hormones skyrocket, so it's no wonder acne makes its appearance then when people are teenagers. Besides these hormonal factors, there is a bacterial agent called propriobacterium that infects the pores, and also like with androgenic alopecia, there is a genetic component which determines who gets acne. It turns out that acne is very common. It appears in 80% of adolescents, and I myself had it when I was a teenager. One very notable difference, though, between acne and androgenic alopecia is that acne Acne usually gets better with age, while androgenic alopecia gets worse. So even though I had acne as a teenager, I only rarely get outbreaks every now and then, and when I do get an outbreak, it's usually no worse than just a couple of pimples or so. Well, with all the different causes of acne, it's not too surprising that just lowering DHT with finasteride or dutasteride has not proven to be very successful in treating acne. We know acne is linked to sebaceous gland activity, which is controlled through the type 1 5-AR enzyme, which finasteride does not inhibit. Dutasteride, on the other hand, does inhibit the type 1 5-AR enzyme. However, despite this, dutasteride has still never been proven to be an effective treatment for treating acne, so this type 1 suppression may just be an incidental effect of the drug. 
The reason why dutasteride suppresses more scalp DHT than finasteride is because it is a stronger inhibitor of the type 2 enzyme, which is the predominant enzyme in the hair follicles. We also know dutasteride is a much stronger inhibitor of the type 2 5AR enzyme than it is of the type 1 isoenzyme. So it could be the type 1 inhibition of dutasteride is just too weak. But even if it weren't, it likely still wouldn't be very effective because acne is much more multifactorial in its causation compared to androgenic alopecia, where it really is as simple as just suppressing the goddamn DHT. So, you guys remember talking about clascoterone, that one drug that got a lot of hype a couple of years ago? Well, what it is, if you haven't heard of it, it is a topical androgen receptor antagonist that was recently FDA approved for acne in the form of Winlevy. As it turns out though, even though the drug is clinically proven to help acne, it hasn't proven to be any better than just topical tretinoin, which is a non-hormonal retinoid, which is also prescribed for treating acne. So this again is evidence that although androgens play a role in acne, they aren't the whole problem, unlike with androgenic alopecia, where the problem literally can be pinpointed to one specific androgen, namely the trash hormone DHT. Now, as a lot of you guys already know, there is a more potent form of clascoterone being researched for hair loss called Brizula, which I have talked about on this channel a few times, but not for a while, because several years ago, it was getting a lot of hype, but a lot of that hype has died down over the past couple of years, largely because the existing research doesn't show it to be all that effective. Also, Brizula has really taken a backseat to the much more promising pyrolutamide, which has thus far produced far more promising results, and I did a recent update video on that product, which I'll link below if you're interested. At this point, though, I really wouldn't be surprised if Cassiopeia, who are the manufacturers of Clascoterone, end up giving up on Brizula, and Clascoterone winds up only being FDA-approved for as Winlevy for the treatment of acne. Anyways, in looking at dairy products and acne, there is pretty solid evidence that consuming dairy will make your acne worse. There have been a number of studies on this, in fact, but the best study is a meta-analysis that was published in 2018 titled, quote, Dairy Intake and Acne Vulgaris, a systematic review and meta-analysis of 78,529 children, adolescents, and young adults, unquote. So just from the title, you could tell this is a monster of a study with almost 80,000 subjects. So this research is going to be pretty definitive. In a meta-analysis, what researchers do is they take previous studies and blend them together into one big study, which usually results in more definitive conclusions. Anyways, the authors of this meta-analysis identified 14 proper studies of acne and dairy intake, and in these studies, there were 23,046 subjects with acne and 55,483 controls subjects. Before getting to the study results, you're probably wondering why milk would have anything at all to do with acne. Well, as it turns out, milk is a giant hormone beverage. I mean, why wouldn't it be? It is designed to turn a 65-pound calf into a 1,600-pound cow. And even though cows are not humans, they are still mammals, and all mammals have remarkably similar DNA. So one of the hormones in milk is IGF-1, and it turns out that cow's milk is high in IGF-1, which makes sense because IGF-1 is one of the most anabolic substances an organism can produce, and that is why it is used as a performance-enhancing drug which is popular with many bodybuilders. As it turns out, if you drink a lot of milk, the IGF-1 levels in your blood goes up. To show this, in this study, healthy subjects drank milk three times a day for 12 weeks. Among other findings, the serum IGF-1 levels in these subjects rose by 10%. It's not clear if this is due to IGF-1 being absorbed directly from milk, but that seems unlikely since IGF-1 is a protein. In fact, it is similar in structure to insulin, and you know you can't take insulin by mouth because it is digested and broken down into amino acids within the gut. The same thing probably happens to IGF-1 in the gut, so it may be something in milk that stimulates IGF-1 production by the liver rather than just direct consumption of IGF-1 that raises IGF-1 levels. But anyways, regardless of the mechanism, it is clear that the outcome of drinking milk is increased IGF-1 levels, which as we pointed out is a stimulant to acne. Milk also is a potent stimulus of insulin release, as you can see in this study right here. Milk causes elevated insulin levels, and over time, this leads to insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. What's also bad is that insulin stimulates androgen production, so this effect of milk may also worsen acne by increasing androgens, which trigger acne. As you can imagine, this could also affect androgenic alopecia, and you'd be right to think so, but we'll get to that in a little bit. We're still talking about acne here. So, with all this theoretical data about why milk 
joke might worsen acne, it's not surprising that there's evidence that it does. Getting back to the meta-analysis, the authors found that any dairy intake increased the chance of getting acne significantly. In this figure here, each type of dairy is listed, and the lines to the right show what effect of drinking or eating dairy had on the chance of getting acne. The vertical line marked with the number one is the line where ingesting dairy made no difference on getting acne. Anything to the left of that line means the chances of getting acne were decreased, and anything to the right means the chances of getting acne were increased. As you can see, Every kind of commonly consumed dairy product is to the right of the line, so ingesting dairy made acne worse. For example, eating any dairy increased the odds of getting acne by 25%. Drinking milk increased the odds by 27%. Eating cheese increased the odds by 22%, and yogurt by 36%. Also, the authors found that the amount of milk made a difference. Compared to people who drank less than one glass of milk per week, people who drank two to six glasses of milk increased the odds of getting acne by 24%. Drinking a glass of milk per day increased it by 41%, and drinking two or more glasses of milk a day increased it by 43%. It's worth mentioning that the current USDA food guidelines recommend two and a half servings of dairy per day, so these subjects were not consuming anything too far beyond what is already recommended by food lobbyists, or excuse me, I mean the U.S. government. This is all very vexing to me, because who are the target demographic for a lot of dairy advertisements? It's teenagers. Teenagers, including myself when I was a teenager, were bombarded with absolute bullshit telling us things like milk was essential for building healthy bones and growing strong, and in fact, back in the 1990s, I'm willing to bet the majority of people didn't even know there were sources of calcium outside of dairy products. The propaganda really was that bad. But what is dairy really doing to all these young men and women. It is making their acne problems worse, which is especially immoral since acne is a problem which predominantly affects teenagers. So no doubt, adults you see today who are disfigured from things like acne scars very likely fell victim to these incessant advertising campaigns that brainwashed them into thinking dairy was important for proper development. So the authors of this meta-analysis conclude that there are strong ties between milk consumption and acne, though since the studies in this meta-analysis were not prospective randomized studies, it is difficult to prove that dairy is the very cause here, but it is likely. I mean, it's possible that people with acne like to drink more milk, but that doesn't seem as likely as an explanation as the fact that the known effect of milk consumption on IGF-1 and insulin production is increased levels, which are probably causing more acne in people who drink milk. The incidence of acne differs from country to country, of course, and it's likely some of the difference is from diet, in particular dairy consumption. The authors point out that there is no acne in Kitavan and Achi Hunt gatherers. These are primitive tribes who don't consume any dairy products, but of course there are differences between them and modern lifestyles too, but this still seems like more evidence that dairy makes acne worse. So what about dairy products and hair? Well, initially in theory at least, the increased IGF-1 levels caused by milk might actually improve hair growth. We know that IGF-1 levels in hair follicles from balding scalps are reduced. Also, there is a rare condition called Laron syndrome where people don't have IGF-1. As you might expect, these people turn out to be very short and they don't get acne, which again shows how IGF-1 seems to be critical for acne development. However, they interestingly also have very sparse hair growth. In fact, people with Laron syndrome can treat their hair loss by supplementing with IGF-1. So we clearly need IGF-1 for normal hair growth. In fact, I did a video about this and I'll link it below. Our old friend Dr. Trua has studied hair loss in patients who have deficiencies of IGF-1. Here is an example of a patient who was found to have thin hair that was totally unresponsive to finasteride and minoxidil. He was found to have low IGF-1 levels. So you might conclude from this that the more IGF-1 you have, the better your hair will be. But you'd be completely wrong in that front. Although IGF-1 deficiency can cause hair loss, it turns out that having too much IGF-1 also causes hair loss. This was shown in a study of 51 healthy men where hormone levels were drawn including testosterone levels and IGF-1 levels. These levels were correlated with the presence or absence of baldness. None of these subjects were on 5-air inhibitors, and so subjects with higher testosterone levels had a greater incidence of hair loss, which you might expect, since there's nothing stopping the conversion of testosterone into the trash hormone DHT. More surprising than that, though, is that higher levels of IGF-1 are also correlated with more hair loss, as you can see in this table right here. As the authors state, quote, 
for each 59 nanograms per milliliter increase in IGF-1, the odds of having vertex baldness doubled, unquote. So it is clear that IGF-1 is kind of a double-edged sword here. If you have too much of it, you will lose your hair, and if you have too little of it, you will also lose your hair. But your chances of having too little IGF-1 are very rare and only present in people who have genetic mutations like Larynx disease or pituitary tumors. So the fact that dairy products raise IGF-1 is not a good thing at all, and could certainly make hair loss as well as other androgenic conditions like acne worse. So milk stimulates IGF-1 production, which is not good for your hair, but milk also causes hyperinsulinemia, which stimulates androgen production and higher testosterone levels in people. People who drink milk and are not on a 5-AR inhibitor will experience an increase in their DHT levels, which of course is not good for your hair. There's also the problem that milk contains lots of other hormones like we mentioned before. Here's a study from Iran of all places that looked at hormones in milk. As you can see in this table here, there are all sorts of hormones in cow's milk, including prolactin, IGF-1 like we already mentioned, prostaglandins, testosterone, progesterone, and estrogen. Who knows what effect all this has on our bodies, let alone our hair. Even if I weren't a vegan, I wouldn't want something I was drinking to contain all this disgusting shit. So some people may ask me, but Kevin, what about whey protein? Are you telling me I gotta stop drinking this stuff, bro? Well, what is whey? Whey is a protein that is derived from milk, and oftentimes it is a cheap byproduct of the milk industry, which has led it to becoming popular as a supplement, and even though there are a lot of marketing claims about it, scientifically speaking, there is no real advantage to it over any other protein powder source. So, when it comes to the subject of whey protein and hair loss, I tried finding anything I could, and every time I searched for something, I kept on coming across this guy right here named Dr. Lauren Shapiro. Dr. Shapiro published a study that is widely quoted by Bro Science fitness forums populated by people who think they are exercise physiologists all of a sudden because they watched a video about how to squat by Omar Isuf. Anyways, I put published in quotes here because this study has never been published in a peer-reviewed journal before. It is just published on Dr. Shapiro's website, and here it is right here. In the study, Dr. Shapiro claims that whey concentrate is beneficial for hair, while whey protein isolates are bad for the hair. So that all sounds really confusing, so let's take a look at the actual science here. Whey protein, what it is, is that it's a protein that is high in branched chain amino acids, which are also known as BCAAs. BCAAs have been linked to obesity and insulin resistance. Worse than that, though, from the point of view of hair loss, BCAAs cause an increase in testosterone levels, as you can see in this figure here. Like we've already discussed several times, an increase in testosterone without a 5-AR inhibitor will cause an increase in DHT, and thus an increase in hair loss in people who have androgenic alopecia. So based on this, whey protein can potentially accelerate hair loss, and milk, which contains whey protein, can do the very same thing. This can, of course, be mitigated if you are using a 5-AR inhibitor. However, the spike in IGF-1 levels caused by milk will not be affected by 5-AR inhibition. So, at least in theory, milk can worsen hair loss even in people who are on a 5-AR inhibitor like finasteride or dutasteride. So, a lot of this is admittedly speculative. Truth is, there isn't a lot of research altogether showing the effects of dairy products on hair loss, and this could be because of the tremendous financial influence of the dairy lobby on the U.S. government, which has it by the balls. That's why the government gives them subsidies to save their business, which is failing due to competition from plant milk alternatives. At the very best, there is no benefit to consuming dairy. There is nothing found in dairy that cannot be found in other sources, and if dairy were so vital for human health, then the majority of the human race would be fucked, since 65% of the human population cannot even properly digest dairy, and that includes 36% of the U.S population where dairy consumption is so heavily marketed. In fact, the highest incidence of lactose intolerance comes from East Asian countries, which include nations like Japan and Good Korea, who both have lower incidences of chronic diseases compared to Western countries who have much higher levels of dairy consumption. So clearly, we've all been had by the dairy industry's propaganda. We don't need it, and the hormones found clearly make acne worse and probably don't help much with hair loss either. So based on this, I think the safest thing to do is just remove dairy from your diet completely. I know people like the taste of cheese and chocolate milk, but it's not like any of the shit is essential for human health. There are plenty of milk and cheese alternatives available, and you don't need to drink milk to get calcium or vitamin D. 
If you are into protein supplementation, there are plenty of other equally good alternatives that aren't whey, and a protein supplement really isn't going to give you huge gains at the gym in any case, unless you're severely protein deficient, which probably just means you need to eat more food in general. So that's my take on dairy. I apologize to all the dairy worshipping cults like the Weston A. Price Foundation, the Ray Pete Forums, and all the butter coffee slurping keto bombs who got their education from Eric Berg and the bone broth book section at Whole Foods. But that's my advice there. Take it or leave it. I'll see you all next time. God bless.